We have a green light. Okay, so how many people recognized everything that they just did on that video? So this video is kind of nice in the fact that it kind of goes through a typical Wednesday morning. What happens on a golf course before the golfers actually show up? And this video we've been watching for a while in the turf management, turf uh, golf professional students, it's pretty common. They're like, boy, we've been golfing a long time. We had no idea that that much activity took place before we show up. And as turf management students, where you're trying to become the superintendents, you're those operators, you're that crew that's out there doing all that work, the whole concept is to get out there before the, the customer, your golfers, get there so that when they get there, it's this nice peaceful experience that you see at the end of the video. Then the problem with that is, you've done such a good job, or the industry has done such a good job, that you don't exist. There are people that believe golf courses, the grass grows that way. Literally have no idea that there's actually a mower that actually does keep that grass at that height. And we have done such a good job of hiding that whole process from our customers that many of our customers have no idea that it happens. Even more so with the technician. We don't want them to see mowers, but we really don't want them to see the maintenance shop. So the maintenance shop is usually hidden off on the edge or if it's on the course, they're surrounded by trees so that you don't see the facility. And the customers, the golfers, if they see the building, it's just like this building that's there, but it, it, nothing happens. There's nobody there. So you hide the fact that all this maintenance takes place. And inside that building is a technician that's keeping the equipment running, and there is no such thing as a technician. In their minds, why, this equipment never breaks down, right? Because how often does their mower at home break down? You know, they only mow the lawn you know, an hour a week, two hours a week, and since it rarely breaks down, they would expect that at a golf course, the mowers will never break down. So the fact that you would have someone on staff that would <clears throat> keep this stuff running, is just they didn't, even, they didn't even consider it. So the technician position doesn't exist, and even you as technician, uh, turf technicians, a uh, turf management group, you don't exist. <clears throat> if you do exist and they do see those mowers, how big are the mowers that you're operating? Are they any bigger than the Ryan lawnmower that people have at home? Yeah, yeah. Some of them are, but a riding greens mower, is it any bigger than a riding lawnmower at home? Not a lot bigger. It's about the same size. I mean, it, I mean, relatively, when you play in golf and you walk by and you see a riding greens mower, it's going to look like, you know, your big riding lawnmower you have at home. And you know that when you buy a riding lawnmower, it costs somewhere between, you know, 2500 and maybe 6000 for a really, really, really fancy one. So that riding greens mower, when it drives by, costs how much? somewhere between $2,500 and $6,000, right? Of course it does. They don't realize that that one riding greens mower at the cheapest end is going to be $18,000. They don't realize that if you get a hybrid or a diesel version that it's going to be $26,000. And they don't realize that's only one, but you probably have six or seven of them. They don't realize that that fairway mower, which okay, so it's bigger than my riding lawnmower, so it's probably more expensive. It's probably like what, eight or nine, maybe ten thousand dollars, right? Because it's a little bigger. So they exponentially look at that. They don't realize that that fairway mower going by is forty thousand dollars, and that you would have five or six of them. They have no idea that there is nearly a million dollars worth of equipment sitting in that facility that made that happen today. So that event that you've seen in that short little video clip, there was close to a million dollars worth of equipment that was out there trying to make all that grass short, not just make it short, but make it precisely short in a two to three hour time frame. And that if you've got a million dollars worth of equipment, somebody better keep it running. 
And if one of those machines breaks down and you decide, well, we're just not going to mow the fairways today. We're going to mow everything but the fairways. And can you do that on a golf course? Can we mow everything but the greens today? No. And so you've got to have somebody that if it breaks can get it fixed and out there because this got to mow today. So you might actually have you know, a fleet of backup machines at that same price tag sitting in the storage facility that you didn't even use today so that if one of them breaks down or more than one breaks down, you have a backup, a $40,000 backup to be able to go mow. And so the golf industry is a big industry and it's an industry that's done a great job of hiding the fact that your jobs in the different industries are all there and most people don't realize that that's even a career. So I kind of wanted to show you that so that you can kind of see if you've never experienced what happens on a golf course, you know, it's an appreciation of what takes place. And it takes a lot of people, both operators, it takes managers, it takes technicians to make that take place. And there's a lot of coordination that goes on. So when we go out there and we're trying to mow and we have no experience and we're just kind of making lines, when you get on a golf course, all those lines need to be straight. And there's a lot of different things that we do to make that aesthetic lines or the aesthetic uh, look of the golf course like it is. And it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of knowledge to make it all stay green, to not die, the trees not die of diseases, and to keep everything so that when you walk out there it looks like a picture on a magazine. So it's a it's a busy thing. So that's what we're trying to do is just go out there. If you're not going to go into the golf industry, at least maybe with the new eyes, have a new appreciation for what those mowers are that you're driving out there and a new appreciation of an industry that's out there. And one of the things that I find interesting is people are like, I'm never going to go in the golf industry, so I don't really care about this. Why well, a student early on in my career, older student, he was probably 57, 60, so just a little bit older. And his goal when he went to college was to go back to Tushi and open a two-cycle repair shop. He wanted to repair chainsaws and that kind of stuff. Didn't want to be very busy, just wanted to go back, open his own little shop and, and work there. And so his whole two years that he was in this program, he was focused on doing a lot of handheld products because that's where he was going to go. And that's what he was going to do. One month out of the program, he went up by Sunnyside, got a job on a golf course, worked on a golf course for two and a half years, retired. Four months later, he died. He never did open his own little repair shop that he spent his whole college education focused on doing and he didn't want to do reels and he didn't, I don't like golf courses, I, I, golfing's stupid and so he wanted to avoid everything golf related in the, in the two years. That's where he did. His whole career really was on a golf course working on reels and reel mowers and that kind of stuff and he rarely worked on any handheld products. So you never know what direction your life's going to take you. You may be where you are thinking, I'm going to go some direction, anything but golf courses, and you may change. We have a current student, a student that's in my program right now, that came from Montana. At age of 14, he opened his own little repair shop. So he was homeschooled. He, his mom bought a Briggs and Stratton teaching package. So they got an engine and he got some software and he got access to this online teaching program. And so he learned how to rebuild small engines and stuff like that. And so he opened his own business at age 14 and did that for four years and then came here. And when he came here, he just wanted to kind of maybe see if there's anything else that he could learn. And improve a little bit so that he could go back and continue and so he would go home on holidays and he was trying to keep his business going in Montana while he was a student here and after the first year last year he kind of like started 
not going back. And then he finally decided, you know, maybe I should actually put some distance between my clients that I had and when I come back. Because as he went through the program, he learned a lot of things that he had done wrong. He's like, I don't even know why the customer's mowers worked because I did these things wrong. And last summer, spring came along and I'm anticipating that you know, he's gonna be taking off and going to Montana. Well, we had a job opening that came. We get lots of job openings. And we had a job opening come for the John Deere Golf and Turf dealer in Spokane. And he's like, hey, can I apply to that job? I'm like, I thought you had your own business already. He's like, yeah, but I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't go back this <laughs> summer. And I'm like, okay. So he applied and spent the summer working at John Deere Golf and Turf. No idea, no plans on going to the golf industry, and now he's working for the golf dealer. He goes to the, to the golf courses when they have problems trying to get a real mower to work. That's the guy they call up, and that's who he goes out there. And so my point is, always look at what else is out there. So even if you're not in turf management, even if you're some other program, you know, always look at what other industries have, because you never know what might actually change your thoughts. And the golf industry is a whole unique industry within itself. And it's really, I had a student that went to a golf course and worked. He's like, you know, a golf course is just a farm. It's just a farm. So I, I live on a farm. You know, it's like, when you say it's a farm, what does that mean? He's like, well, I mean, it's a farm. You've got a product that you're growing. They just grow it really short all the time. So it's a really precise farming where everything is cut perfect all the time. So instead of having a crop where you raise it tall and whack it off and harvest it, they just let it grow a little bit and whack it off. And so you're farming. And really it is. You've got equipment that you're out there and you're farming 120 acres and making it perfectly manicured all the time. So it's just a different industry. So that was what I was trying to do there. So now we're going to stop the video and then we're going to go watch.